Good evening, supercomputing superstars, and welcome back to Denver, Colorado. My name is Savannah Peterson. We're here on theCUBE with live coverage of the biggest high performance computing event of the year. We have one more segment left before we get to have a little Colorado Kool Aid. And no, I'm not talking about cannabis, I'm talking about cores. Don't know if you guys <laughs> knew that term. I sense Coors. the nervousness over here on that open, everyone. Oh, come on. We are talking about very cool, very nerdy technical stuff. We are. Got to make sure the audience is listening. And on their toes. Lisa, let's open it up to you. Yes. First full day of supercomputing ever. I know. So exciting for you. I nerded out. Takeaways, standouts, what you see, what you hear. Huge. Got to talk with some great companies today that all had great customer stories about how they're really helping customers embrace the AI revolution. So it moves from the hype, the peak of the hype cycle into a reality for businesses to, to really bring it into their yes. organizations to make business impact. So that embracing the AI revolution was I think one of the themes that I heard throughout the, the conversations I had. Talked with some folks from Dell, Denver DataWorks. Um, we had Vaughn Stewart on from Vast Data and really kind of talking about the revolution there that they're seeing from a data management, pl data platform yeah. perspective. So the, the acceleration, John you were talking this morning about how one of our sessions how the change is happening overnight and I, that was the vibe that I got today with all the customers I, and, and vendors I spoke with was how rapidly the pace of innovation is and has to be. I love that, I, and I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, it really feels like we're at a moment where lots of these things were happening in silos, perhaps pun intended, because there's a lot of conversations about silos on the show this week, but now the water level's rising together with all of us and the ships are able to sail into a place of, of, of applicability, which is yes. what you touched on, which exactly. I think is super important. David, what about you? You've been roaming the floor. Charming. Um, yeah, charming, charming, charming everyone that I can. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's, what, what, I, what I really like about this conference is that um, there's a certain kind of hype that doesn't exist here. And the hype yes, that does not exist point, here David. is yeah. the hype around this idea that everything that we do in the information technology world needs to be abstracted to some essence you know, it's the, it's the kiss on the cheek that you feel when the breeze blows against you while you're standing in a flowing field of wheat. It's like, no, no. It's GPUs and CPUs and TPUs and this storage metal, and networking. This is metal, this is cable, yes, this is yes. glass, there is hardware. this is there are, water. There are freaking yeah. pool pumps. Yeah. Because, yeah, they, because, <laughs> thermal, because, because thermal dynamics are something that need to be dealt with. Yes. So it's really refreshing to actually be able to see to step back and look at the big picture, but also have permission to look at the individual Legos themselves and take yeah. seriously this idea that it's really important to focus on infrastructure. I say this to my students all the time, if you take your eye off of the infrastructure ball, you're going to regret it. And I think there are a lot of, uh, a lot of companies here that would agree with that. It's been very, very interesting. And this is just really the, well I guess sort of second day. Yeah. Uh, first day for me though. Well, I mean, yeah. we were all hot shots and early achievers in yesterday, nerding out, but, but I think it's really the first full day of people on the floor. Yeah. John, this has got to be a really interesting full circle moment for you. Yeah. You are one of these folks to begin with. I mean, you're obviously still one of these folks, but you got your start in yeah, this zone. Yeah, I mean, I started, you know, when I was graduated as a software engineer, Hewlett Packard got out of the software business, that was my first real job, and so I had to become a hardware engineer um, and SC, and so, they saw they had they had PCs, they had mini computers, and so you had to connect stuff together and you had applications, people would buy stuff and businesses would run on them. And there's a practical nature of it, and I think, you know, today's point, there's a lot of blocking and tackling that goes into the infrastructure that enables and powers applications to run, and then you got middleware, you got the concepts of that hardware, middleware applications. You know, it kind of doesn't go away, and I think to me, this game is changing, but it's still the same. And you got, still got to store stuff. Now storage ain't going to look like it was before. You still got to move packets from point A to point B. Yeah. That's networking. Servers got to run stuff. You have more cores, more GPUs. And then you still got the same developers trying to build applications. Now, what I love about this world is that HPC has been grinding since 1998 on one mission. High performance computing, make stuff go faster, and power and cooling and large density. Things are things that they've grinded on. Now all of a sudden a liberation is here. You got AI and HPC together, and then the perfect storm is the semiconductors are getting better, fabulous, and fab oriented. You got cloud scale going next level, and then data is exploding. So to me, I look at this as more of an opportunity recognition dream for entrepreneurs, people who are change agents, young students looking at the landscape to make impact. 
Yeah. And that, that's going to be about, you know, have an idea, sparking some creativity, and again, we heard from the CEO from Grok that as inference becomes big, the ability to create is going to change. You can actually get answers back faster from these streaming AIs, which will inject Orders of magnitude quick iteration too. from the AI to get you to a point of ideation. So I have yeah. been on this train of this cre creative culture is going to explode technically, and so I kind of see it here. So as the entrepreneurial side of me is like, wow, there's so much opportunity. Like, where do you, where do you, where do you go? Along and everybody sees it. Sorry, John, along the creative cultural front, we had a great conversation with the Ohio Supercomputer Center. Go Ohio. And they were talking the about the solution. The pride was real with that squad. Yeah. It was amazing. The pins, I, I appreciate that dedication and commitment. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 he get was all good. in, he you was, know? He had oh, yeah. he was good. He was amazing. State of Ohio, but They talked him. about this solution they have called Open On Demand and how it's empowering everybody, from students, from like art students or life sciences students in completely different areas, researchers, industry professionals, to have remote access to, wet, to, to supercomputers, and it was something that really kind of was accelerated during COVID, but he was talking about allowing the creativity, to John's point, of so many different types of non-technical people to, to harness the power of HPC and AI to, to really be creative and explore and, and in, make impacts within their industries. And that was such an interesting conversation that we had with him and, and the wide adoption that Open On Demand has had in its first 10 years is remarkable. I think it's so, it, it, it's really great that you just brought that up. I mean, you're talking about people being able to do their area, their subject area of expertise, yes. right? We just had a fantastic <laughs> segment with Dell. They've had, well, a lot of fantastic segments with Dell over the course of the day and over the course of the week. But they were just on with Texas A&M and their ACES project and, and talking about that collaboration. They want researchers yeah. just to be able to come in and research. Yeah. They want scientists to be able to come in and sequence the genome or in yeah. the case of one of their student projects, which I really fell in love with, folks to be able to go in yeah. and recruit more STEM teachers for K through 12, so that not just this <laughs> gen or the gen with previous to us, but the youngest of us, yeah. are, you know, the, the wee ones are growing up in a place where they can learn this technology natively in the way that I was a digital native. Natively. Imagine being an AI or quantum native. Yes. That I think is really fascinating. Well, I mean, I think you brought up Dell. Dell. I did. Dell, we appreciate them sponsoring theCUBE to be here and letting us program in our way, which is get the audience the best content, you know, because it's about unpacking the trends and it's, that's a special gift. I want to thank Dell for that. But if you look at Dell, you know, I, I'll, Dave, I'll never forget what it been, Dell Tech World a few years ago, um, they were on the theme of don't talk speeds and feeds, we'll talk solutions. Right. Uh, back, in the, back in that, that right. day. And we were like, man, no, no, because we were on the, the hardware matters band. We're like, guys, if you look at the cloud, the silicon, Amazon was talking about Graviton early then. Well, it was going to swing back to hardware. And I remember Jeff Clark was on theCUBE, and now the, now the in charge of Dell, Dave asked me, does hardware matter? And he's like, of course it does, <laughs> he had to right. think. And, and at that moment, it, it hit me that it's going to happen. And Dell's in a good position now to retool and be positioned, take advantage of the GPU wave and the integrated networking around it. And so I think you're going to see Dell catch this tailwind. So they have an opportunity to reset their systems. Um, and Hardware Matters, that's the show here. Um, yeah, we did that no a couple of years ago. It's like, oh yeah, we started Hardware Matters, but look at that's all they're talking about. Yeah. Right. It's speeds and feeds but also the enablement, because it's not about just some solution, they're all solutions. And so I think Dell's got a great sweet spot here. Yeah, it's interesting because this is very much hardware focused, yet when you look at AI infrastructure at least, the majority of AI infrastructure is actually software. And so, so there is great that point. whole stack on top of the hardware stuff. And yes, things like connectivity become critical when, it, when, you know, when we're talking about um, hardware uh, specifically. I, I, I wonder, and you know, we've got, got a couple of days left. Um, I was struck when the internet was a new thing by people who complained that this new internet thing would stifle creativity. The kind of creativity that arose from going through a physical card catalog in a library and having serendipitous things happen. <laughs> oh, hey, look, I'm looking for this book. What is this book? Well, the people who worried about that fundamentally didn't understand the power of the internet <laughs> and how serendipity would be magnified yeah. immensely. I found myself being concerned that the sort of standardization of AI tools isn't going to lead to greater creativity, but it's going to 
create this great narrowing to single sources of truth where all other options have yeah. been weeded out. And, and maybe that's, I hope that's a function of age and I am just as wrong as those people were wrong yeah. about the effect of the internet. Um, but I am hearing people who are so afraid of missing out, they're running towards standardization yeah. very, very quickly. So I think we're going to see this sort of running towards standardization and then I think there's going to be backlash. Yeah. We've seen yeah. companies like Oracle go through this where yeah. they create their walled garden and it's great for a period of time. Yeah. Um, it doesn't work in the long term. The best indication of success in a tech company is to become the most hated tech company, right? <laughs> because, you, because you're Oracle's indispensable. Oracle's doing great there. You're indispensable. <laughs> you're indispensable, so people are frustrated because they no longer have the same leverage over you that they otherwise would. So it's interesting. So who is that, who yeah. is that now? Is that NVIDIA? Is it going to be? Well, Nvidia I definitely don't overplayed their. Someone else? Nvidia definitely overplayed their hand on the GPUs. That is definitely clear here, and from our other reporting, you know, they kind of had a nice price market on the <laughs> GPUs, and they made a boatload of cash. Still are. So, and, and they still are. are. So, at that stock price. So, so you know, barriers. Thing. What does classic business school tell you? Barriers to entry. That's my market. Right. Your margin is my opportunity. Jeff Bezos said so. I think there's going to be a GPU opportunity. And now, should I worry that an AI is going to pull out of this conversation? Dave Nicholson hates Nvidia. Maybe. Just to be clear. No, no, they'll just say, to be clear. They'll say, <laughs> just to be clear, that is not true. Uh, <laughs> no, they'll say I said it. You'll say. Well, if anything, if anything, you were saying that as a compliment, right? When you're the. the I big love power, Nvidia. Yeah. When yes. You're the big power player. Oh, I just about said something that I'm really glad I didn't. Caught myself right on the end of the day there. Uh, <laughs> but I, 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 I actually, I, I'm going to lovingly disagree with you, David. I don't. Which part? I don't think that, well, there could be a few parts. Now I'm going to focus on the, <laughs> the, like the, the goal is to be hated, or you know that you've made it when you're hated. I think there are actually very big players in the space that are adored right. and loved. And I don't just mean OpenAI and ChatGPT. I mean, we are seeing, I mean, we were just at KubeCon all week yeah, last well, week. Mm -hmm. and and, and open source movement is huge. Enterprise is playing with these startups. We talked to Johnny Dallas, I'm going to bring it up multiple times on the show. If we've got engineering teams of three doing the same thing as 500, or for example, I chatted with IQM earlier today, they're one of the other companies building quantum computers here. Yeah. They only started four years ago, and they only have 300 employees. They are building machines that are deploying AI I, and I, ML. I, go ahead. Uh, do you want me to finish the sentence or would yeah. you just like to talk? Because that's fine if that's what you would like to do. I'd like you to finish so I can chime I, well, in. I'm going to let you go because you no, I are I think, so excited to I think, say whatever I think it is Dave, that it's just going to ooze out of your I body. I think Dave's point was not so much about that. He's talking about the old school enterprise companies. Back in the old days, you had to have a lock-in. You had to actually extract rents from customers. Where I think you're getting at the point is with open source, the value creation is different. The um, sustainability advantage is different. So, don't you defend know. me, John Furrier. No, Savannah and I were having an argument. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave now, okay? <laughs> I love it though, you're, but okay. you're, you're moderating, you're facilitating. Well, which I was is, being sarcastic, well, Savannah. When I, I mean, of course they don't want to be hated. Yeah. It's just when you're in a position. Please mansplain to me what you when meant. When you're in a position, I love that. Me, <laughs> I, you know, I do, I do a lot of work here to make y'all look sexy. The point, the, <laughs> you the, can the throw point, be the a point is that when you're so successful that companies feel like they have to do business with you because you're so good, there's a little bit of frustration there. There's a little bit of frustration there. Of course, no, there you know. is, and I just wanted to play on that tension. I mean, because I think we're in a very unique space where everyone's actually, yes, there are a few AI chip manufacturers that are obviously vying for what's going to be a very large market for the coming future, but my point there was we're seeing a lot more collaboration than you would see in historical industries, both from the student level all the way to the government. There's multiple government organizations in here, which yeah. I think is really interesting. You've got the NSA just around the corner yeah. here, everyone be on your best behavior. We've got NASA, and then you've got universities literally advertised right behind us. So it, it is this very collaborative, I don't know that I like the term democratization, maybe it's just because I studied political science in school and it's not exactly the right application. However, I do love seeing this emphasis on collaboration across teams and this mm -hmm. less, bully, I'm not going to tell you what I'm working on, because yeah. the reality is everyone's going to need each other's tools and their multi-cloud setup to, yeah. well, to Well, access was what they talked about on their projects that are winning, the Ohio project, and uh, Dr. Uh, Lisa was mentioning access. Yeah. Getting people access, that's... I just love to let researchers be researchers. Yeah, yeah just that was, that, that, that's well, yeah. it in a nutshell, it's just the simplicity of that, just let them... And we talked about that with a lot of companies, uh, vendors and, and folks today, in terms of meeting the customers where they are, whoever the users are, and making sure that the experience to them is seamless, so to your point, 
they can do what their talents are really best suited for. I love yeah, Dell. Absolutely. I love Dell. I wouldn't have guessed okay. from the, this segment. <laughs> Since AI's uh, <laughs> recording this, you know, I want to thank you just Dell. Wanna, you want to make sure. <laughs> okay. I want to make sure you go I on I love record. my mom. Okay. In okay. case you anyone's on, wondering, you're going to make it really thing. clear, Robert Dell, Peterson, I love Dell you. Dell deserves a shout out <laughs> for allowing us to have theCUBE here. Dell Technologies, enabling next generation AI. I love Dell, for the record. Well, I, I, have, I have a question. I have a question. <laughs> I have a question uh, for Lisa. So yes. have you had a chance, have you noticed, <laughs> if you haven't yet, be sure to get around, but have, have you noticed all the, the university stuff? Yes. Yeah. Sab mentions it. Yes. I mean, it's, it's, it's so cool. The academia I love it. it's so presence cool. here is it's not right? trivial. It's, it's it infiltrated across the entire not, show. Yeah. No, it's not trivial, and this is, and, and I will, this is a hill I'll die on. I have fundamentally believed that one of the things that has held us back as a society is the lack of collaboration between the front lines of people in academia and research and the front lines of entrepreneurship. Yeah. And when those two things intersect, people like to call it startups. No, it's not startups. Academics are over here in a complete and total different right, silo. Right, and right. you've got venture capital and young guns with confidence over here, or older guns with confidence over here in an entirely different silo. Yep. This is the only event that I personally go to, and I would be very curious if you two feel that way, where I see not only illustrative collaboration where someone's trying to do a little halo effect, here's what we're doing for this group of minorities or younger people yeah. or less affluent people, yeah. but no, active collaboration, multiple projects with enterprise, with the academics, and with the chipset manufacturers and new up and comers that are coming into this space. Yes. And yes, I am excited about it, everyone. It was collaboration and action. We can make fun of my okay. gesticulation all you no, want 100%. because damn it, I care about no, this. I, I, I totally disagree with you. No. <laughs> No, I, 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 I totally, I, I, totally, I totally agree. If, and, I, and I'll bet there are some large vendors who are cringing because they're saying, but we have students at our show. Well, I didn't notice them. Honey, they ain't coming up and talking to us about I their did, projects. I, didn't, I haven't so. noticed them. Yeah. I think that, I think at every big tech show, it should be noticeable. That's Invites what I'm should go about. out. Scholarships should be put together yeah. to pay, yes. to have, let, Make them talent, stay. Make them stay four attraction. to a room because they're kids. Yeah. <laughs> but, but 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 these you know these shows should have these I, folks yeah. involved if for no other reason. Yeah. Look, it's going to be beneficial to those companies who want to hire these people. Exactly, talent attraction. So oh. Oh, that's yeah. why I loved. I well, loved and, this and, so and, much. and to your point, the next generation is upon us. This summer, we we call it the summer of AI love in San Francisco because they had the most meetups. I think New York was second, but I think San Francisco had over a hundred different meetups. Mostly under the age of 30. No wonder I didn't get a date. It was and, the summer of AI love. And, <laughs> and so they are totally into this, like standing up models, playing in open source. So it's a ripe environment to yeah. entice and bring people yes. in, and yes. sent them, entice them, yes. motivate them. Yes. Um, and around the world. Like, yeah, I mean, we were talking to Dell in Romania, speaking of Dell, and they've got a big community in Romania around this too. So it's yeah. not, I mean, Silicon Valley, we think of it as a tech hub, and there are events <laughs> there. I, I, I get that, and I watch that as well, but uh, what I love is these different groups popping up everywhere. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like we see with the CNCF community. The cloud community is so global, so many different countries involved and active and just curious about what's next. Well, why don't I ask you a question since it's your turn to answer. What was your favorite part about today? What interviews jumped out at you? What, what was the tea leaves saying to you? What were you seeing? Mm -hmm. Today, what, what jumped out at you, was it? So, as you know, the show is a bit like my Christmas, and it's really hard to pick a favorite present in the same way you would you know, pick a favorite child or whatever, they're all your favorite. But I was deeply motivated by our conversation with Grok. I thought Jonathan had a lot to say, both from an architecture perspective, as well as just an implied perspective. Yeah. So I mean, we're going to be, and, and, and he said something that I want to summarize that I thought was great. Uh, with risk, for example, we're going to be going from risk detection to risk prevention. Mm -hmm. And if you apply that, we were talking about the financial industry there, but if, if you apply that to healthcare, right. for example, yep. or general um, avenues of safety, the difference yeah. between processing a batch at night, once a day or once a week versus every second, saves lives yeah. quite literally. And that brings me a lot of hope and a lot of joy that this boom, will not go down the Skynet side that you see a lot of people being fearful of, but that will end up in a place where we're doing more good faster across generations. I think that's because you're literally a lifesaver. <laughs> <laughs> so are you. 
<laughs> That's a story I think we'll probably have to keep. Uh, say, on that note. Yeah, I was just going to say, on that note, uh, if you would like to see more heroics by the Cube staff, please continue to tune in to our coverage all week here, live from Supercomputing in the Mile High City. My name's Savannah Peterson, and thank you for tuning into the Cube, the leading source for technology coverage.